Hello, I'm Simon Kennan and I'm editor of Interventional Cardiology Review. I'm here at Euro PCR 2015 with Vinnie Bapat to talk about the Fortis valve. Vinnie, thanks for coming along. Thank you. Um, can you remind us about the mechanics of the Fortis valve, please? So, uh, Fortis valve, as you know, is one of the first transcatheter mitral valves. Essentially, pretty similar as that of the TAVI valves which have been used uh, with the Edwards design. A nice central cylindrical portion which is functional. Uh, the anchoring mechanism is around the mitral leaflet, so it gathers the mitral leaflet and catches them against the valve body. And then an atrial flange, which is something similar to a satellite dish, which uh, centralizes and stabilizes the valve from the atrial side. Okay. Transapical? Transapical to start with, as with most technologies, yeah. uh, because the delivery system is much bigger, and the advantage, of course, of transapical is it's a very direct, straight approach, so it's pretty logical to stick with that at present. Okay. And you did the first case when? So we did the first three cases. First case was done 18th of February 2014, so more than a year ago now. Okay. And the third case was done on the 24th of February. So the third patient who is still alive and doing well is more than a year now. Okay. How many patients, how many cases were done before the CE mark trial globally? So in the UK we did only three cases uh, as the papers were submitted for regulatory. So we could not do any more compassionate cases. Uh, more cases were done in Germany, Switzerland, Canada. So more than 20 cases have been done now all over the world and the results will be presented tomorrow. Excellent. And the CE mark trial started when? So the CE mark start, uh, trial as such started first in Germany and at present the it's not a CE mark trial really, it's a clinical feasibility which is a pre-step to CE mark. Right. Uh, so the idea is to do 25 cases in Europe and 25 cases in US. The US will be FDA clinical feasibility study, uh, while the feasibility study in uh, Europe will be Switzerland, Germany, three centers, and hopefully once we get approval, uh, one center in UK, which is St. Thomas's. Okay, all right. How's the trial going? So at present, uh, there has been a press release yesterday uh, that there have been two incidences of early suspected valve thrombosis, uh, which have not been clinically significant, but have been observed on the echo. Uh, this is because, right. as we know, that one of the biggest challenge uh, the mitral implants are going to face is not just how to implant it, uh, but the anticoagulation. Yeah. And there has been such varied practice at present uh, that it is a bit unclear whether this is relevant in all cases or not. For example, the patient who is alive for more than a year is just on aspirin and his valve is functioning well. Right. So we are, we are unsure at present and rightly so the Edwards wants to investigate it before they roll out for the patient. Okay. But not clinically significant? Not clinically significant as far as I know. Okay. And what was suggested in the protocol for anticoagulation, do you know? So the suggested or agreed protocol was three months of anticoagulation with warfarin and an antiplatelet agent. Right. Uh, the discrepancy or it could be viewed as whether it's dual antiplatelet or single antiplatelet were left to physicians. Okay. But essentially warfarin was important for first three because yeah. the, any device is covered with a lot of cloth. Okay. And whereabouts on the prosthesis was the thrombus? We actually don't know about that uh, because uh, that data has not been disclosed yet, okay. um, even to the investigators. Okay, fine. Do you know when you're going to start doing the trial? So we are expecting from MHRA still a two-month delay in the whole process, uh, but the papers have gone through MHRA ethics committee and local committee, which is called TRAC committee, it's a new device committee. Right. Uh, so as soon as the approvals are in place, uh, we have already started screening more patients. Okay. Um, so once it happens, we'll start. And presumably they're not quite as high a risk as the initial patients that you did? Absolutely. I think the initial compassionate cases are uh, very not only very high risk, but they have no other option. Yeah. While what we are looking at today, and lesson learned from TAVI as well, that if you want to investigate a bit more about longer term, then you have to select 
high risk cohort and not inoperable cohort. Yeah, yeah. So they will be high risk patients. Could you give us a feel for sort of an average patient? An uh, average patient, surprisingly, most of these patients are coming from heart failure clinics. Right. Uh, so these are on the younger side compared to that of Tavi. Uh, so patients who are in their 60s uh, with very poor ejection fraction. Uh, the cutoff line has been 20% because anybody less than 20% with severe MR uh, generally have a very poor ventricle. Yeah. And then we have to also do a cardiac CT scan as well as a TOE yeah. to make sure that the anatomy of the patient matches with the device anatomy and appropriateness. Okay. But essentially, a lot of these patients will have renal failure in the background and in fact may also have a previous operation such as CABG done in the past. And this is not functional mitral regurgitation? This will be functional mitral regurgitation. So the initial focus will be functional mitral regurgitation. Okay. Uh, one of the reasons is the commonest degenerative vital regurg we see is leaflet prolapse. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think any of the new transcatheter mitrals would want to dwell into and take that chance because the anchoring is generally based around the leaflets. Right. So okay. if there is a leaflet prolapse, nobody knows at present whether it will remain stable there or not. It may remain stable, but currently mainly is uh, FMR patients. Okay, that's very interesting. And the data from the pre ce mark patients is being presented tomorrow? It will be presented tomorrow, uh, the updated data. Uh, there have got uh, quite a few number of ca more cases added from Laval in Canada. Right. And a few more from other centres in Canada and Germany. So these cases will be presented tomorrow. Excellent. Thank you very much, Vinny. Thank you, as usual.